Uh, welcome everyone and thank you for taking some time out of your busy days to, uh, to take a look at uh, our solution uh, from Parallels, uh, which is our Parallels Mac Management for System Center Configuration Manager. And uh, how uh, we enable you to manage your Macs uh, uh, beyond the native functionality of SCCM. So just a quick few slides here and uh, then I'll jump into a physical demonstration here for you. So uh, Parallels, if you're not familiar with us, uh, we've been around since uh, the introduction of the Intel chipset uh, into Macs. Uh, we started with our Parallels desktop, uh, desktop virtualization solution about eight and a half years ago, uh, which is when I started with the company. And uh, to providing um, Basically, what we're most familiar with is running a, a, a full-blown Windows operating system on uh, on your Mac. And uh, by the way, that happens to be what I'm demonstrating from here today. Is I'm doing this demonstration on a MacBook Pro using our uh, desktop virtualization to host our virtual environments. Um, so uh, a few years ago. I, Going on three now, I guess we've uh, we decided that uh, we really needed to have uh, uh, some way uh, or better way to implement Max into the enterprise. We saw a need there. We saw that need uh, based on SCCM, as the SCCM is the major uh, major management protocol for Windows machines in the inter enterprise and uh, decided to go ahead and, and uh, develop a plugin for SCCM so that uh, SCCM admins could manage both Windows and Macs through that uh, single pane of glass, which is the uh, System Center console. So uh, traditionally, of course, um, this has been the approach for managing PCs and Macs together. Uh, we manage the PCs because we've got very finite control within SCCM and we just kind of left the Macs alone uh, because they didn't cause many problems. Uh, we didn't have the security issues on the Macs that we had on Windows so we left them alone. And, uh, and the other option was to manage your PCs uh, within SCCM and then to just find a separate third-party solution to manage your Macs, having two separate systems. Um, so what we did is we decided, well, the, you know, we've got a very fine management system already in, in SCCM. Uh, let's just plug the Macs into it with Parallels Mac Management. And uh, so as I said, Parallels is a plug-in for SCCM. Uh, we simply uh, plug into your existing infrastructure, utilizing your uh, your SCCM hierarchy. We do not need any uh, additional hardware or or anything else. We're simply using what you already have in place, and utilizing the skill sets you've already built up within SCCM, and applying those to the max. So we have, uh, you know, this is just kind of a high level of what I'll be touching on today is the, the ability to discover and enroll Macs uh, outside of the native SCCM functionality. We have our own agent and discovery method. Um, inventory of hardware and software that's on that Max. The ability to uh, create configuration items to uh, push out for your Macs for corporate policy compliance. And then software patches, OS image deployment, uh, as well as a self-serve application portal and the ability to use SCCM reporting functions to pull up information on the Macs. So I'll just kind of slowly scroll through this list. I don't think I need to read it all off for you guys. Uh, this is what we're going to touch on and this is just basically compares uh, our plugin to the native functionality of SCCM. 
parallels the course in red, uh, SCCM in black. And as you can see, when we start reading down through the list here, uh, there are uh, quite a few more functions that, uh, that we bring to the table uh, as compared to the native SCCM uh, R2. Now, the one thing I would highlight here is here at the bottom is our configuration. Uh, we do not require that you enable HTTPS in the PKI infrastructure and certificate structure in order for our solution uh, to work within SCCM. We can work with the standard HTTP. So uh, it's not required that you implement this uh, like you would have to with the native SCCM uh, 2012 R2. Um, we have uh, gotten a little bit of awards here. Last year, TechEd, uh, a bunch of your peers decided that we were a pretty good product and were kind enough to award us uh, a best of show here. And uh, when it comes down to the actual deployment of the solution, the plugin, uh, here's just a basic screen. It consists of uh, some basic components, a parallels proxy service um, that, that enables the communication between the Macs and SCCM. Our Mac client is our own agent that we install on there. It's independent of the native SCCM agent. You do not need that native SCCM agent. And then the console extensions, which puts the graphical user interface into the configuration manager console for our parallels functions. Um, Microsoft likes what we're doing. Uh, we get a lot of help with them. Our developers work closely with them on the plugin. And, uh, and so we get a lot of help with them. And um, they're kind enough to uh, make a physical endorsement for us here. So let's go ahead and we'll move uh, on into the demo and I'll show you what it's all about here. We'll go ahead and make a transition over here and uh, we have here uh, a system center, uh, our Windows 2012 server running System Center 2012 R2 Configuration Manager. We also have a Macintosh uh, Yosemite virtual machine that is acting as our client for the demonstration. So we'll slide back over to here and uh, we'll just start from the very beginning here, which is the administration and the actual discovery of your Macs on your network. As you can see here under administration, we have our Parallels Mac Management. So uh, all our command buttons are branded. So as your SCCM admins uh, go through the console, uh, it's very easy to determine our parallels commands that we have added uh, to the console. And so when we look at here at our discovery method, uh, this is for the automated discovery and enrollment of the Macs into SCCM. Uh, when this is configured, uh, Macs are automatically discovered, our agent is installed automatically, and they are enrolled into SCCM in the background. And the way that works is if we go up here into our properties, we see the discovery properties here. Um, we use a third party product that we've registered called Nmap uh, that is actually uh, doing the, the work of the scan during the scheduled discovery period. Um, the boys at NMAP have a good sense of humor here. You can regulate how often the scan runs through uh, during the schedule. And depending on, um, on who's looking at it, you can do a very, very light scan as paranoid, 
or you can go to the other end of the scale and, and uh, repeat the scan very aggressively as in the insane mode. Um, or you can be polite and leave it in the middle. Uh, the discovery process takes place via the uh, established boundaries and boundary groups that you've already set up in your SCCM hierarchy. In my case here, I, simple ha I simply have one boundary group to select uh, and within that boundary group only a single boundary. So you can make this a lot more uh, granular if you have multiple boundary groups, uh, then you can select or deselect the boundaries within that group that you want to run uh, the discovery against. If you want to make just a real quick discovery on a specific subnet, you can do that as well by creating a manual subnet entry to run the discovery against. How you schedule this is entirely arbitrary on your part as to when you want to run it, how long you want to run it. Um, you can break down your network into different segments and make a separate schedule for each segment if you want. Now, in order to automatically enroll our agent, it does require an administrative account. So uh, most uh, people, when they bring their Macs in, are creating a, a local admin account on that Mac uh, for their IT department for management purposes. So in this case, you would provide uh, that admin local admin account. Now, uh, while not required, if your Macs happen to be already enrolled into Active Directory and set up to allow management by domain admins, then you could provide a domain admin account here for that same purpose. So once we've got our, uh, our schedule set up, uh, we go ahead and run the discovery and uh, and then our max will start to show up. So that would be in the, under assets and compliance and if we look here in our device collections uh, as part of the plugin we create the all Mac OS 10 uh, systems device collection. By default all Macs that are discovered are written to this device collection and we show up here and now we see our demo Mac uh, is here is enrolled, the site code that it's in and that, it's an, that it is an active uh, uh, machine that is joined to the domain, to, uh, to SCCM. Now if we happen to discover a Mac in this process that we do not have an administrative account for, then that Mac is still going to show up and be discovered in the all Mac OS 10 systems. Uh, it's just going to show up as an IP address uh, without any other information. Uh, it's telling you that it's out there but no agent has been installed. Now we also have another method for, uh, for getting the agent installed onto the Mac and in that case uh, it's simply a matter of providing this URL to your end user or to your technician that is, uh, that is implementing this. Again, the user must have administrative rights in order to install it. Uh, we'd simply download the agent, uh, mount and run the installation package on the client. Um, once the installation package is completed, then uh, it will go ahead and open a second Windsor window uh, reaching out to SCCM to get authorization to enroll. Uh, that authorization to enroll consists of any, uh, any domain user account. It does not have to have any admin privileges. It can be a standard domain user account to enroll into SCCM. So once we have our agent installed, and we'll go back to our assets and compliance and we'll look at our demo Mac here. Uh, 
um, we can start uh, working with the Mac. So we see here that we have some Parallels management tools that are available. So you have two options for, uh, for a, a remote connection from the console to the Macs. You can either connect to the Mac uh, via a uh, VNC connection, which uh, allows you a remote desktop interface with the machine, or you can connect uh, via SSH and PuTTY uh, for a command line terminal session with the Mac. So two options for remote access from the console. We also uh, exposed down here the machine policy retrieval and evaluation cycle, uh, an SCCM tool. We just made it easier for you to find for the Macs. Uh, when applied to a device or a device collection of Macs, it simply tells them to, hey, I have a policy here for you. Please come and get it right now. So just a way to speed things up a little bit. We also move over here and into the start. And immediately upon enrollment uh, into SCCM, an inventory takes place. Uh, that inventory is controlled, and how often that inventory is refreshed is controlled by your device settings within SCCM that you already have applied to your Windows machines. So by default, it's seven days. But when that inventory is taken, all information is written to the standard SQL database of SCCM. We don't modify it in any way. Uh, it's written to all the same tables. So um, that lets us use uh, SCCM tools like Resource Explorer here to uh, look at the inventory of the Mac. So we have all the standard windows here. It looks just like a Windows uh, Resource Explorer, which it is. It's just recording Mac information. So we have all the hardware. We have the installed applications on the Mac, both application name and version. And then we also have a couple of other things that are unique to Mac. Uh, the first off being the File Vault 2 disk encryption status. So recording the encryption status of the Mac. So uh, if you happen to have your Macs encrypted with a third party solution outside of the File Vault, then it would show up here as, as we see it here as an unknown type, uh, but enabled and the date that it was enabled. Uh, because of my demo environment, it doesn't really show the other option, and that is the Apple Care warranty status of the Mac. So um, we reach out to the Apple Care server with the uh, serial number of the Mac and get its current status, either uh, either not uh, outside of coverage or the expiration date of that coverage. Now we have two custom reports, um, one for File Vault and one for the Apple Care warranty status. And so by running those reports, you can get a complete list of, uh, of the status of all your enrolled Macs, uh, both File Vault or encryption status and warranty status. So we have our Macs, we have them enrolled. We're, uh, we can now uh, start taking a look at compliance settings and configuration items. So if we look here under here, we again see our Create Parallels Configuration Items. So these are things that we've added. We see here that we have two different uh, OS 10 configuration profile uh, selections. So the first is uh, for a profile manager that we have built in as part of the plugin. The profile manager currently supports these payloads 
for configuration on your Mac, such as a password uh, complexity compliance rule or the ability to deploy certificates uh, to the Mac from this configuration profile. Um, the other item that we have when it comes to configuration profiles is a configuration profile from file. So this allows us to uh, to utilize a native Mac server uh, with a native Mac profile manager on it. With that native Mac profile manager, you can create a profile and export that profile as a mobile configuration file, which we can then point to and apply that to your Macs. Now, this native Mac server is not required for the functionality of Parallels Mac Management. It's just an option that we give you. And these days, a native Mac server consists of any Mac uh, computer and, and then going to the Apple App Store and downloading the server app for $19.95. So for 20 bucks, you can get a native Mac server to run Profile Manager on. Uh, again, not required, but available for you, your use if you would like to do so. Now, we, I was talking about File Vault, and uh, here we have uh, the ability to create a uh, File Vault as a configuration item. So File Vault is, is Apple's native encryption process, uh, somewhat similar to BitLocker for Windows. Uh, and there are two possibilities that you can use to, uh, to encrypt your Macs with File Vault. Uh, the first process would be the institutional method that we see selected here. In this process, uh, on a Mac, you go through and you create an administrative keychain for, uh, for File Vault encryption. That process creates a File Vault uh, public key file certificate. Uh, we simply point at that certificate here and push that out to the end users uh, or the end machines. In this case, all of your Macs are going to be encrypted under this single certificate. Now, during the process of creating this certificate, you also create a single set of recovery key information uh, that you would use to decrypt the Mac if you needed to, like the user left or forgot their password, can't get into it anymore, you need the recovery information that is created with this institutional process. And uh, since it is uh, a single key, all of your Macs are, uh, can be decrypted using that single set of recovery information. In this case, it's up to you as admins to store and maintain the security of that administrative keychain and the recovery information. Um, the other process that you can use for file vault encryption is the personal key method. In this process, uh, when pushed out as a configuration item and a baseline, uh, each individual Mac is going to be encrypted under its own uh, file vault key certificate. In this case, when Macs are encrypted using this process, once they are encrypted, the recovery key information is actually sent to a small sub database that we add to the SQL database of SCCM, whose sole purpose is to hold and escrow the recovery key information for all the Macs that are encrypted under this configuration item. So in this case, we do collect the recovery key information and we do hold it for you uh, to be able to pull it up when needed to recover a, uh, a machine. Um, you can either recover that data from our interface down here 
by providing a serial number or a hardware ID, or it's also available under the devices and the property of the device itself as a file vault tab. So we go back to our configuration items and we have two other items here and these uh, pertain to our Parallels Desktop Business Desktop Virtualization Solution. So uh, while Parallels Desktop uh, is not required for the functionality of managing Macs within SCCM, if it does happen to be part of your infrastructure, having desktop virtualization for your Macs so that they can run Windows, Linux, uh, other Mac OS X uh, operating systems. Um, we can uh, configure that environment for you so that you can have a standardized Parallels desktop business infrastructure. So both the application-wide settings such as uh, security and the ability to lock end users out of the preferences panel for the application so they can't go in and make changes, uh, how Parallels desktop updates are configured, or how USB devices uh, connect to the virtual environment. So you can set that up, or uh, you can also uh, set up the configuration for the virtual machine itself. Uh, for example, the resources that are assigned to the virtual machine, uh, numbers of CPUs that are available, uh, amount of RAM that's been applied uh, to the virtual machine. How it's, how it's optimized, how it starts up and shuts down, views, things like that. Um, also security the ability to lock the end users out of the editors here so that the end user cannot make changes to the virtual environment at this level. So again, not required for, uh, for our Parallels Mac management solution, but there if it is part of your uh, infrastructure. We can also utilize the native functionality of uh, SCCM to create a configuration item. And so <clears throat> in this case, hmm, excuse me, getting a little scratchy throat there. In this case, we're using the native function to create a configuration item for OS X. And so one of the primary uses for this would be to, uh, to deliver a scripted solution to the Mac as a configuration item. So uh, if you wanted to script a function uh, for the Mac, you could uh, then deploy that script created configuration item uh, to push that out to, uh, to your device collections of Macs of choice. So once we've created a configuration item or items, then, uh, then it becomes a matter of creating a uh, baseline. And when we go up here, we see no parallels branding here. This is a standard SCCM workflow for creating a configuration baseline, just like you do for your Windows machines. Uh, you simply select the wizard, you create the name for the baseline, you add your configuration items to the baseline, assign categories if you want, <coughs> and create the configuration baseline. Once the baseline is created, then just like uh, with your Windows machines, you set up a deployment schedule of uh, the baselines that you want to uh, create um, and send it to your device collection of choice. So in our case, all Mac OS X systems. And simply create your schedule as to when you want it and you deploy. So uh, 
once the configuration items are created, it is just a basic uh, workflow to push out the baselines to your device collections of choice. So at this time, uh, we've uh, discovered our Macs, they're enrolled, we've got inventory, we've now given them a, uh, a standard configuration. Uh, we can start taking a look now at software and how software is delivered. And within SCCM, there's uh, the two current methodologies for deploying software to, uh, to your machines and devices is either through the applications process or through the packages process. So we'll start with the applications here and we'll go up and we'll create. And as we can see here, uh, there's no parallels branding. The create application workflow is the standard SCCM, uh, uh, standard SCCM process for, uh, for creating an application uh, to deploy to your Macs. So if we go here into our Mac, uh, we see that we have a Mac OS 10. Uh, we need to provide the location for that application. So here's our location. We provide that in there. And then from here on, uh, again, we, uh, we just follow standard SCCM workflow for uh, creating the application. Now, one thing that I will point out here is we notice here that we see, you know, our Adobe Reader installer dot package that that's what you would expect to see for a Mac installation, either a dot PKG or a DMG. In order to use the applications process in SCCM, uh, Microsoft has created a utility called the CM app util. Um, this utility is as you create it at the bottom line is you end up with a tool on a Mac that you need to run uh, via a terminal session against this installer package in order to convert it into this CM Mac file format. Uh, SCCM can't deploy the native installer through applications. It has to be converted. So this process is documented in our admin guide on how you create that CM Mac file format. It's also well documented in TechNet. Uh, if you want to just uh, search TechNet for the CM app util, since it is a Microsoft process. So everything else here is standard SCCM workflow for creating an application uh, from this point on. So where we tie in to the applications process is once you create the application and you go into the properties um, and the application catalog. So just like Windows apps, you can deploy them as required, which will install them on your device collection of choice, or you can uh, deploy them as available. When deployed is available, they get published to the application catalog. Uh, in the case of Microsoft machines, the application catalog is a web-based interface. In our case, we have uh, changed that uh, and, and we actually utilize a small uh, application installed as part of our agent. Um, so that agent shows up on our on your parallels, uh, on your Macs, as our parallels application portal. So this allows you to publish to your end users applications that you've determined they could use if they want to, uh, and and download and install from the application portal. Um, end users do not need to be local admins on uh, their machine. To install from this, they can just be a standard user to add and uh, remove programs from the portal. 
categories, categories and publishers uh, are created during the creation process of, of the app. Uh, so under properties here in the application category, you see here user categories. Uh, you simply edit and, uh, and create uh, your categories that you want to display in the application portal. So packages for application deployment. Again, we see here that uh, there's no parallels branding. This is, a, this is an SCCM workflow to create the package. And uh, packages are a little bit easier because they can utilize the native uh, installer, uh, Mac installer, uh, for the deployment. So we simply uh, We simply browse to our uh, our folder here. Uh, oops. Okay. Well, we'll go with Google Chrome here. We select the folder inside is the uh, inside is the installation package, uh, and then we go uh, okay, and next standard program and next. And so here is the only difference. Um, so we're going to call it Google here, and this is in the command line. So, uh, so actually, the command line is uh, is going to show up. like this right here. So Windows machines are normally uh, installed via either an MSI or .exe or a number of other methods, but you provide that command line to the executable to launch the installation of the application. Macs are a little bit different, so this is the formatting that you would need to provide for the command line. Again, this is documented in our admin guide. Also, we have KB article that's really good about telling you how to take an unknown application you haven't worked with before for a Mac and, and how to create this command line. From here, everything becomes standard SCCM workflow. Um, when it can run, how it can run, whether it's run with user rights or admin rights. Uh, same as you would do for, uh, for a Windows installation. So once we've got our software created in packages, again, it's standard SCCM workflow to uh, distribute the content to distribution points and to deploy to your device collections of choice, same as you do with your Windows machines. Now, the last thing we'd like to show you here is for our operating system deployment. And let me back up just a second now that I've said that. Um, in the beginning, I said that we deploy OS 10 patches. So currently, the OS 10 patch deployment is handled through the package process. You need to download the OS 10 uh, updates or patches, and then create a package to deploy to your, um, to your, to your Macs. Um, that sounds a little uh, labor intensive, and it is, and, uh, and thanks to uh, our program manager attending a SCCM event in Chicago uh, um, about a month and a half back. Uh, called Ignite, where he met with lots of SCCM admins. The number one request was a automated method to update Macs through SCCM, uh, similar to a Windows system update server. Uh, he took that to heart. 
that is now the primary feature of our next version upgrade of Parallels Mac Management 4.5 that's going to be released uh, at the end of this year. So you will have a uh, we will have a function to where you can automate the Mac updates. Uh, so I can't show it to you now, but it's coming in the not too distant future. Now we'll go to operating systems. So operating system image deployment. Image deployment is handled uh, via a slightly modified Apple Netboot server service that we also install on your distribution point. That's how it's distributed. And uh, we can add a boot image and a OS X image. So the boot image, uh, both of these images are created on a Mac. Uh, they need to be created there and, and exported as a .mbi or netboot image file format. So once you've created those on your Mac, you carry them over to your, uh, to your server and SCCM does not recognize the netboot image file format. So we've created this wizard here that essentially puts a wrapper around that uh, MBI file and uh, fools SCCM into thinking that it is a Windows image management file, which it can see and recognize as an image to deploy. So having the, the boot image available uh, allows us to broadcast out to the Mac so that when they boot up, uh, they can boot up via a network image and boot to this boot image. And so let me show you that. We'll, we'll go ahead over here and we'll bring up a blank virtual machine that has no operating system on it. We boot into it. We go ahead and we go to, uh, we're gonna boot from our network. Goes out and gets the boot image. And so I'll return to that in a second. So we now have our we now have our boot image out there. We can we can look here. We also see a restore image. And so the same process works for adding a a whole disk image uh, to deploy to the Macs. Uh, it requires you create the MBI file and then convert it to uh, to a, a .wim format which SCCM can use. Once you've created the image, then you go ahead and you create the task sequence for the image, uh, just like you would for a Windows machine. You give it a name for the task sequence and the image package that you want it to deploy. Once you have created the task sequence, this is a new functionality that we've just introduced here in the last, uh, with our 4.0 release about a month and a half ago. And that's the ability to edit the task sequence for the Max. And so at this point, let's see where our image is at. Uh, okay, we're up, it sees us here. Uh, so we want authentication. To log in, in the boot sequence, and so now we're checking, and we'll let this come up, and now we get to select a task sequence. So OS 10 image deployment. So we'll go back over here, and so this is the editor for that task sequence. So uh, the functionality that we've included is the ability now to, uh, to create a complex or layered task sequence. So as part of this task sequence, uh, you can configure uh, this task sequence to have the Mac join uh, to your Active Directory domain. 
to install software uh, packages as part of the deployment. Uh, be able to set a host name for the Mac when it comes online. So enabling you to create a more fully featured and fully configured Mac machine all in that single task sequence. Supposed to say yes here. So, and so how that looks up here is that with the boot manager, you could create multiple task sequences. So you can have a task sequence that's designed for your development team, one that's designed for your marketing team, one that's designed for your accounting team, because all three have different software needs. You can deploy a, a small base image of OS 10 and then apply uh, the software packages afterwards. And the way that looks in here is, uh, there's my mouse. Okay, of course it looks like uh, it's going to, uh, not want to comply <laughs> with me. So at this point, while I'm going around and, and, and coming back to this so you can see it, this is the basic functionality of our Parallels Mac management and, and what it brings to you. Uh, the plug and play integration with SCCM. The fact that we're working within your existing SCCM infrastructure, we don't have to add anything, no hardware. We don't have a specific skill set that you have to add to it. You know, our management capabilities of the Mac uh, above and beyond the SCCM native functionality. And, you know, it's it's pretty short learning curve. There's just a few buttons to learn how to do it. So, uh, at this point, um, this is the basic functionality that we bring to System Center. And so uh, we've got a little bit of time left here in, in our, for our webinar. So i uh, uh, love to entertain any questions you might have about, uh, about the demonstration today. Great. Thanks, Craig. That was fantastic. Uh, a lot of good information there. And, you know, who would have thought that PCs and Macs would work hand in hand like that? So um, that's wonderful. Yes, like Craig uh, said, uh, we are open for some questions. So we've got quite a bit of time. I failed to, um, to mention a few things at the beginning of, of the webinar. Uh, the draw will be held. It will be held afterwards for all of the attendees for the iPad mini. I haven't forgotten about that. Uh, we'll be sending a link to the recording and to the PowerPoint slides uh, afterwards. Should probably have that by tomorrow. And I'm sending a survey link. If you could kindly respond to just a few questions, really it'll take you 30 seconds, literally. It's in the chat box there. We appreciate your feedback. So we'll stay on the line until uh, the top of the hour with... Um, waiting for any questions you might have. Thank you. Okay, it looks like we have our first question. A couple of questions actually. All right. Good. Yeah, we're getting there. So, a first question. Mark asks, is there any way to suppress new Mac OS X operating system installs that are initiated by the user? Um, if, that, if that user is a local admin on the machine, um, there is really no way to prevent them from from updating an operating system. Um, 
we can't really uh, there really isn't a policy within Mac to uh, block an end user from doing that. Unfortunately, kind of the nature of the beast of OS OS 10. Um, the only the only positive way to prevent that is to make them standard users on their Macs so that they do not have the authority to upgrade. Okay, great. I hope that answered your question, Mark. And you do have another question. Um, is there a way to map drives or manage printers through parallels, much like the Windows world does with group policy? Okay. Uh, so, uh, the ability to uh, to go ahead and uh, and manage printers uh, is um, is a function that that we're going to be adding to our uh, to our configuration wizard. Uh, currently, you can manage printers for Macs. Uh, through the native profile manager, if you wanted to use that to configure printers, um, but uh, at this point in time, uh, we cannot specifically from within SCCM in the console uh, man manage uh, those printers in that manner. And um, really, printers are on the Mac side are. Uh, are not really as manageable as as we are uh, with Windows machines, uh, but the function is available as a uh, as an addition in a native Mac server. And so, short answer is is at this point in time we can't manage uh, those Mac printers in that way. Uh, we will uh, in future editions of our Parallels Mac management. Okay, great, thanks. Those are great questions, Mark. Um, I don't know if you can answer this, Craig, but it's a, a pricing uh, question um, from Todd. The cost per client, is that some information that you can share with us or um, is it um, to reach out I, to the sales team? I, I can give them uh, our, our standard MSRP Okay. Uh, for uh, for pricing, um, you know, all our pricing is done through the channel manager channel. Uh, so we don't necessarily sell directly ourselves, but uh, the basic MSRP is is uh, thirty dollars per device um, per year for the Mac. Okay. So uh, we don't care. You know how many times the plugins installed into your management infrastructure. You can install the console extensions on as many machines as you have the configuration manager console running. Um, that doesn't matter. It's based solely on uh, on the client. Okay, great. Thank you. Hope that helped, Todd. Uh, I've got another great question here. Uh, wondering if iPad will be supported by Parallels. Okay, um, that's that's a very good question and an interesting one. Um, in that um, we initially looked at that as as part of our solution uh, until we started talking with uh, with Microsoft and and their implementation of managing iOS devices uh, through Azure that's coming out and everything. And um, and determined that Microsoft was actually doing a pretty good job of managing iOS devices with uh, R12. So at this point in time, rather than duplicate uh, duplicate work that they had already done, we decided not to uh, not to implement uh, the direct management of iOS devices. Uh, this may change in the future don't necessarily know, but at this point, uh, we do not uh, directly manage iOS devices. Okay, thanks for that honest answer, Craig. Um, that's all we have for now in the question box. Uh, we still have a couple of minutes left, and we'll, like I said, wait till the top of the hour if you have any further questions. 
If not, you are free to leave the webinar. Thank you for joining us. Um, thanks to Craig from Parallels. We're sorry Carlos could not do the presentation today, and I, I failed to mention that at the beginning. He was called away to something else, but he obviously handed the baton to somebody quite capable uh, in Craig. And if you want any more information um, from Parallels, from Infront, please reach out to us. Thank you very much for joining. We hope to see you at the next webinar.